Okay. Okay. Pauline, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see the PowerPoint presentation there? If you're with me, if you're not, that's okay. It should be totally fine. All right, please do come off the mic if you cannot see <laughs> um, the PowerPoint presentation on your screen now. Okay. So welcome along and let's get to it. So this month's topic is physical activity for arthritis. And if you were here just before, as we were all sort of coming into the webinar, we're having a little uh, chat with uh, Lucille about what um, or what type of arthritis this might be directed at. And I would say that it's just directed at arthritis in general. Majority of people have osteoarthritis. Um, and then I guess second to that is a rheumatoid arthritis. So they often, um, the lens often covers those two. Um, the information in here is still rather um, general and can be applied across the board to across all arthritis conditions. Of course, there will be some individual um, um, I guess, differences or adjustments uh, to, to each con different condition that we may not that we may not be able to cover tonight. And just on that as a disclaimer being that please be aware that the presentation does contain general information advice. Um, we try very hard to ensure that the information is accurate and reliable and evidence-based, um, but it's not a substitute for your individual treatment advice from your doctor or healthcare professional. And we always say to consult your doctor or healthcare provider to obtain individual medical and or treatment advice. Okay. Outline of this evening, why is physical activity important for people with arthritis? So regardless of what arthritis you have, it's, it is important um, to participate in, in physical activity and exercise. How much should you do? It's always a really good and common question. Um, and how to exercise safely with arthritis. Again, there'll be um, various tips and tricks and um, advice measures there, for, depending on your type of arthritis. But there are some general guidelines and types of activity you should do. Let's discuss this and um, what to do if you experience pain during or after exercise. Another very common question. So over to you. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind potentially coming off the mic or you can pop some stuff in the chat. Let's have a go at answering why is physical activity important for people with arthritis? I want to ask you first, what are the benefits of it? Why is it important? Does anybody have any ideas? Probably, <clears throat> probably um, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> That's a good one. If you don't use it, you lose it. So in terms of um, cardiovascular fitness, so your heart and lung fitness, in terms of strength, so your muscle, um, if you don't use it, so if you don't apply um, resistance to it, if you will, you might lose that strength. Um, range of motion for your joints as well. Um, if you don't regularly move through a particular range, like for, with, with, with stretching, with general physical activity, you may then lose or reduce ability to perform full range of motion to enhance and maintain function and independence. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a good one. Thank you, Jane. Anybody else like to, to shout out or put in the chat box? If you rest, you rust, <laughs> rest, rest equals rust. Yeah, I know it can give a terrible um, image in your head. Um, so, but, but, but potentially true. I mean, even without arthritis, when I'm sitting for a long period of time, like a couple of hours in the chair, oh my goodness, I feel so, so stiff. So if you're resting, if you're sedentary, um, you're feeling really, really um, stiff. And, if, and, and you can imagine what that feels like. And that's what, what's going to be like if you compound that. Yeah. 
uh, strengthen the muscles around the joint. Good. Another really good um, benefit and another reason why we should be um, exercising and being physically active. Fantastic. So I've got a little list here. Okay, so we have, what did we, let's have a look. Um, we had, we were talking about pain and stiffness and muscle tension with the rest equals rust. Um, we had a look at, some people mentioned it keeps our muscles nice and strong. Absolutely, which is really important um, as we're aging to maintain muscle mass so we can go about our daily activities and, and do them well and do them with confidence, walking up and down, particularly downstairs, things like that, keeping that, that muscle mass, particularly in our lower extremities. Um, it can also reduce our chance um, of joint changes um, uh, becoming worse over time. So we can potentially slow um, the effects of, of arthritis, um, create a feeling of well-being and improve our sleep. And one up the top there, um, exercise can help nourish our cartilage and bone, which is so, so important when it comes to arthritis. So the actual disease of the joint itself. And the reason why um, exercise nourishes the cartilage, cartilage depends on the synovial fluid and the movement of that. Cartilage in your joint, which is the lovely white, shiny, protective layer that sits around your ends of your bones that helps movement between a joint be nice and free and easy. Um, yeah, it relies on being fed, if you will, by synovial fluid. It keeps it healthy because it doesn't have a blood supply and it doesn't have a nerve supply. So there's really no, um, there's no waste removal service and there's no nutrition being um, given to it by blood or the nerves. So it's got synovial fluid. And what exercise does, it actually helps it pump it in and out of the cartilage. So think of your cartilage as a sponge. Okay. Think of it like a sponge and exercise helps pull it in and out. So squeezes it in and out, if you will, of, of that cartilage to keep it nice and, um, nice and nourished and lubricated. So I want you to I want you to think of motion is lotion. So you need to think of that every time you think of exercise and the benefits of that. I don't want to rest and rust. Um, motion is lotion. Um, you can think of Tin Man if you like. If you like the Wizard of Oz, think how he kind of rusted and then he needed a little oil can. And that oil can is like movement and synovial fluid for our joints. Um, so that little oil can, we need that. We need, aka, we need exercise, and exercise helps create that that lotion, if you will. Okay, let's have a little look at how much physical activity should I do, or should you do? Okay, again, if anybody wants to throw some comments out there or ideas, I'm happy and willing to hear them. Not a problem if not. <laughs> Some of the best advice to go on um, for like a, a, to, to blanket, to, to a generalization, it's quite universal, is to follow the Australian guidelines for the adult and older adult um, for physical activity. So if we follow those, we're looking at 150 minutes, which is two and a half hours of moderate intens intensity aerobic activity. Um, per week um, and 75 or oh, so this should be sorry or or 75 minutes which is an hour and 15 of vigorous intensity um, aerobic activity um, per week or you're looking at a, a combination of both okay so aerobic activity is the things that really get that usually the whole body's involved um, it really works the heart and the lungs, which is so important, not just for our joints, but for our general health. So if you're, um, if you're overweight, if you have diabetes, if you have a heart condition, all of these things, um, exercise, aerobic exercise um, is important to combat those other potential lifestyle diseases or conditions. Um, so aerobic activity looks like cycling. It looks like walking, running, jogging, playing tennis, doing bowls, golf, and things like that. Okay. Um, 
a combination of both you can do because now we're just looking at the intensity. So how hard you might do these exercises or, or physical activity that you're participating in. And the rule of thumb being is that one minute of vigorous intensity uh, activity is about the same as two minutes of moderate intensity activity. And I remember back in the day telling my clients, well, look, you know, those who potentially didn't like to exercise, um, it might be painful for them. They didn't like getting sweaty or things like that. Sometimes they'd say, look, you could actually do less. And they'd be like, what's the catch? And I said, yeah, but you just got, you're just you going to have to go a little bit harder. So it's really up to you how you like to um, get your exercise or your physical activity in. Um, you potentially don't like to go um, all out high intensity, um, which means that you might need to do a little bit more at, at a moderate intensity. Strength training is also very, very important when it comes to our muscle health and our bone health, not just for arthritis, but for osteoporosis, particularly if you're a woman and you're postmenopausal. And that is, again, um, um, about twice a week, two to three times a week. But at the end of the day, some physical activity, some exercise is, is better than none. So that's what, you, that's what your mantra needs to be. Not every day is a good day when it comes to our conditions like arthritis. Some days are bad days. Um, we're fatigued, we're lacking in energy. Um, we have a headache. We might be going through a flare. And in which case, maybe it's best not to to exercise as you normally would that day. Um, perhaps it's just a pain day for you. Um, those days are okay, but it's still best to, to engage in some physical activity. Okay. Any questions there before I move on? I can't always see the chat, um, but I will come back to those questions at the end, unless you'd like to come off your mic, please. I think someone mentioned hydro classes. So warm water, warm water classes are fantastic, particularly for those um, with arthritis. So because of course, water, um, water exercise where we're buoyant, it's not such a high impact um, exercise, which is good. If you, if you have arthritis and it's painful to do land-based exercising, um, not so good if you're suffering from osteoporosis um, because you really need weight-bearing type exercises to um, stimulate um, and stimulate bone growth or maintain what you have. But if you've got both and you're concerned about both arthritis and osteoporosis, you can do a bit of both camps, you know, land-based and warm water classes. Apologies. Um, I have just a quick tip here about intensity. So you may not be the one with a heart rate monitor and you know you need to get in a particular heart rate zone to know you're at a particular intensity. So I understand that that isn't always the case with everybody, but you might like to use in general what's called the talk test. So it's a, it's a measure of relative intensity of your activity. So in general, if you're doing moderate activity, you can talk. Um, but not sing. <laughs> I don't know if you really want to be singing when you're exercising anyway, but give it a try. Um, but if you, but if you, if you can talk, but you can't sing during the ex, the activity or the exercise, um, that's, 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 that's it. you're in the moderate activity zone, if you will. Uh, if you're doing vigorous activity, you won't be able to say more than a few words without pausing for breath. Okay. So, um, Moderate activity might be good for doing it with friends so you can have a chat. <laughs> Vigorous activity, don't expect to have a chat um, if you're doing it with friends. Okay, how to exercise safely with arthritis. Now, I know SMART, S-M-A-R-T, is usually synonymous with goals, like SMART goals. <laughs> this one is SMART tips instead. So let's hope that um, that helps us perhaps remember so s is starting slow and go slow now this will just depend on your level of fitness what other potential comorbidities you may have um, if you if you're starting out and, and you're brand new you're a greenie when it comes to you know exercising and building fitness so it's really going to depend on where you're at but the rule of thumb is to start slow and go slow okay so when you're wanting to increase your physical activity, 
starting slow and, and paying attention to how your body tolerates exercise is, is really important because it might take a few weeks, weeks, potentially even months to get used to a type of exercise, um, duration of exercise, frequency of exercise. So you've got to learn to, I guess, what we call find your Goldilocks zone. So if you remember the Goldilocks story, I'm sure we do. You just want to find what's just right. And unfortunately, sometimes you're not going to hit the mark. You'll be too under. And sometimes you, you, you'll go over it, you'll overshoot. And sometimes you might be a little bit sore the next day. And then potentially, you know, you might have done a little bit too much. That's okay. Sometimes you've got to poke the bear just a little bit. Don't be afraid to find out um, where that happy medium is for you. And once you've found it, then you can just go slowly in progressing. So increasing intensity, increasing your strength, so adding weight, so moving up in TheraBand or going a little faster or harder in the pool or things like that. So you just need to allow your time, uh, allow time for your body to adjust. But starting out slow, uh, start starting uh, low, low impact exercises and activities first, um, and then building on those slowly. Modifying your activity when the arthritis symptoms increase, okay, but you want to still try to stay um, active. And I'm going to talk about that M or modify one very shortly, so I'm going to park it there. Um, activities should be joint friendly. So these are the kinds of ones that you want to be focusing on for arthritis. Most of the time, um, oh, look, again, it really just depends. But in the context of arthritis, joint friendly means more low impact exercises. So those are the type of exercises that don't involve lots of jumping, for example, impact, like running, for example. Um, low um, impact type exercises at the bottom of, of that scale would be warm, like would, would be your warm water classes because you're in the water, you're swimming around, you're buoyant, you don't have any pressure or weight bearing um, movement or forces going through your joints. Okay, but then moving up you know, starting, um, starting low and going slow, um, then you can move to, to your walking, potentially walking up and down stairs, for example. Um, there could be introductions to um, undulating and different terrains of bushwalking. So things like this. And again, you might be you might be quite well fit and your arthritis isn't that bad and you can still participate in high intensity sports and exercises. And so go for it. Recognize safe places. And ways to be active is the R. So um, if you're currently uh, inactive or you're not sure how to start out your physical activity pro your physical activity or exercise program, um, an exercise class could be the way to go just for general introductions. Uh, it's a safe environment. You might like to consult with a physio or EP. Um, that may also be a good option. Um, so you might also want to think about things like if you're going out for walks, um, what's the path like? Um, is it a cracked and, again, very, very up and down undulating path? May not be the best for you. Um, is it flat? Is it grassed? Things like that that you need to be aware of. Um, free of any obstructions, uh, shoes. Shoes is another um, really important um, aspect to to consider when it comes to being physically active because we don't want to be sliding around um, in our slippers or our crocs or anything like that um, we want to be able to pick up our feet and then we don't want anything falling off to trip over um, make sure it's well lit um, and for those that it is applicable to um, it's always good to be uh, separated from heavy traffic traffic um, areas Number, oh, number, <laughs> letter T is to talk to health professionals or uh, yeah, certified exercise specialists. To help with that M part of the SMART tips, which is modify, I'd like to talk about um, modifying um, in the context of pacing. Um, so activity pacing may involve multiple facets of planning, prioritizing, um, alternating activities um, and gradually increasing loads. Um, as you can see there, progressive overload is important so we can actually improve, get better. Um, 
It might be to do with slowing down intensity, slowing down pace, slowing down speed, and it certainly incorporates rest breaks. Pacing is um, or can reduce the severity and the duration of flare-ups or pain states um, for RA and OA respectively. Um, it can also reduce feelings of frustration and low mood through repeated pain flare-ups. Um, Pacing may reduce risk of medication overuse or and adverse effects from this. And pacing may reduce risk of losing physical functioning. So it's something that you may like to start to incorporate um, in the day um, for particular activities or for all activities. So it usually incorporates um, or is the three elements that is to take short breaks. So to chunk, to chunk up your daily tasks, for example, um, and not try and do them all at once. Gradually increase the amount that you do. Um, this might be really um, good for if you're coming back from an injury, coming back from a flare up, coming back from uh, your post op. So you're going to gradually increase the amount that you do. So you can't go from zero to 100 and you can't be doing what you did uh, three months ago um, when everything was okay. And break the tasks into smaller bits. I mean, it goes hand in hand with taking short breaks. So you're chunking your activities up. Uh, you might like to do, think about time and time of day as well. So uh, you may feel that you have more energy in the morning. And again, that, that's dependent. You might be on medication that actually makes you really tired and slow in the morning. So pick the type of day um, that you feel the best, the most energy and, and do potentially the harder exercises or physical activity or activity of daily living. You insert that one there. And, and do it at the time that you feel best. So it really does include a, a whole lot of, of planning. So how you might um, do this is finding a baseline. I'm using a time limit. So to find a baseline of a particular activity that you may find difficult, you, you I guess, you find the baseline, so you choose an activity. Um, for example, it could be you standing, sitting, walking, whatever it might be. Note the length of time you are comfortably able to do that for. And then your baseline will be half of that time. So say um, for you, um, doing the kitchen, for example, I'm just arbitrarily picking out an example here, um, the kitchen and cleaning this, wiping things down, doing the dishes and things like that could take 15 let's just say 10 minutes just to keep it easy and so half of that is your baseline now let's just say it was an activity that you could actually increase maybe there's more to it than just the 10 minutes maybe you actually need 20 minutes so then what you'll do is you use that that baseline and halve it for five minutes and then over time nice and slowly you'll increase that activity by five minutes at a time and that's how you start to slowly build um, resilience and capacity to do particular activities um, learn to plan to break your tasks down. You might like to use a, a pacing plan, to, just a goal, a, 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 um, a weekly plan, a daily plan of times uh, um, throughout the day, the things that you'd like to get done. The goals that you want to achieve, of course, need to be realistic and, and measurable and certainly achievable for the day or the week. And um, try not to make your goal too, uh, dependent on too many other things or people. Just focus on, on, on the one thing. Okay, let's have a look at types of activities that you can do. Again, anything is better than nothing. Incidental physical activity is, is awesome. <laughs> but um, specifically speaking, um, we have aerobic exercise. As we mentioned, um, that's anything when we're incorporating usually big movements, compound movements, arms and legs are involved, like you're walking, you're running, you're cycling, um, aerobic exercise in the water, for example. So it's those sorts of things. And you've got high versus low impact activities. So the low impact aerobic activities don't stress um, the, the joints um, as much as high impact. So that's sort of potentially yeah, you're walking, cycling is a good one, um, swimming and water aerobics, light gardening and group classes, sometimes sometimes dancing, depending on the type of dance. Um, so 
they're your sort of low impact activities. And then again, you could, I mean, dancing can be quite low impact, but it can be quite high impact as well. Um, group exercise classes, the same. You could be doing um, some sort of um, body attack if, if you're familiar with Les Mills um, or some sort of um, dance class, which could be more high impact. So where there might be jumping involved, for example, um, things where you're really um, using a lot of strength and movement, like bending in your joints to move yourself around. And um, they're great if you have the capacity to do that or incorporate some higher impact activities, then certainly go ahead and do that. Strength. Um, so this includes lifting weights. Um, doesn't have to be lifting weights. You can start at body weight. So body weight, squats and push-ups. You could do regress versions of these. You can then move to weights like the lady in the picture. She's holding dumbbell hand weights. Um, you can use machine weights. And these are the things that you may find in a gym. Um, if you don't like a gym, there's a lot of homemade um, um, alternatives. You can use, you can use, uh, I remember telling my friend that she can use the cans in her cupboard. <laughs> um, but really, they're only very, very light. So you may need to be looking at um, purchasing some small weights. Um, TheraBands or resistance bands are also really, really good because they're um, easy to store. They're light and they do provide resistance. Um, so anything where you need to push or pull against essentially is important. Um, we have then flexibility. So we have stretching and, and yoga. These types of um, activities, exercises, physical activity allow us to move through range of motion um, and gently push into the ranges where we feel a little uncomfortable. And this is important. Again, we can use the, if you don't use it, you sort of, you lose it sense. Oh, apologies. Ah, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, and balance. Um, balance is also very important, particularly as, as we get older. Um, um, a big a, a key factor in falls prevention as well. Um, all, of, all of these are actually, but balance, is, uh, of course. Um, so you're looking at things like Tai Chi, for example, if it's a set-based structured class, for example. Um, but then you can do things at home that may include just like walking backwards or standing on one foot or sort of marching on the spot. Um, so those are also good examples of balance exercises. And you might be looking at doing that three times um, per week, particularly if you're at, at a minimum, if you're at a risk of um, falling. Okay. So I'm gonna go to the next slide here. And I'm wanting to launch this poll. Um, it's a true or false question, and it will just gauge where we're at in terms of our knowledge about um, the last few couple, the last, the last few slides. So, the first one here I'm going to launch is a statement: Is this true or false? Um, exercise causes further damage to my joints. I'm going to launch that, so you should be able to see that poll come up, and then you can answer it for me, please. I can't see who answers what, by the way. Um, Wow, we have a very uh, switched on uh, group this evening. <laughs> Great work. Um, I will end the poll and I'm going to share the results. I'm, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> so the answer is, oh, I'll get rid of that. Go away. answer is false <laughs> we got there in the exercise exercise is safe um exercise doesn't harm joints or joints cartilage or make it worse um joints with arthritis benefit from exercise as long as it's done of course with consideration and moderation and again in the context of what arthritis you have so for example if you have an inflammatory type arthritis like ra rheumatoid arthritis 
ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, things like this, where there's an autoimmune component involved. Um, when you have um, a flare, um, that's a time where your body is on full and high alert and your body is attacking tissues, causing that inflammation. At that point there, it's probably not the best time to do high intensity, vigorous activity. You may not be feeling the greatest anyway. And those are the times where it's okay um, to, to, I guess, not exercise, but certainly participate in some form of physical activity when you can. Okay. So um, exercise, in fact, can stimulate stalled or reduced regenerative processes. Within, within a joint, including the cartilage and help improve joint cartilage composition. So it's time to forget wear and tear and start thinking wear and repair. Second poll question, exercise causes flare ups specific to those with a, a rheumatoid arthritis or similar. So let me, find where that one is oh no I got it here we go I will launch this does exercise cause flare-ups oh. now again you might not have rheumatoid or, or similar um but you can still have a go you can still have a go it's a good one Okay, look, we've got some mixed results coming in here and that's, that's good, that's fine. I'll just, yeah, great. I'll end the poll and I can share those results with you. So you should be seeing them now. So we've got majority saying um, so false, saying that they don't. Um, and... When it comes to flares, there isn't any major data to support that exercise will or does or always causes a flare for rheumatoid arthritis and similar. Though um, you may, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, may feel uh, otherwise, but um, no clear cut data to say so. And I guess the reason why I bring that up is to reduce any fear around exercising. And there may be times where you might overdo it, where you're trying to find that Goldilocks zone and you might overdo it. Um, and therefore, and, and then you might, you might be in a little bit of pain. And, um, but will it cause a autoimmune response? Probably not, but it may cause some inflammation. There is a difference. Systemic inflammation versus, versus like local inflammation. Okay, last one. Thanks for participating, guys. Pain equals damage. If you hurt yourself, you start feeling, well, no, sorry, no. If you feel pain, you, you feel you've hurt yourself and there is tissue damage. That's what I'm trying to get out of you here. It, true or false? Let me throw that to you now. There you go. Pain equals damage, true or false? And one more to go. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks for everyone participating. That's fantastic. Um, I love it. I love these responses. Here we go. What have we got here? We have, you should see that now. Again, around 70% of people will are saying, are saying false. Oh, sorry. Nope, there you go. I'm sharing them now. <laughs> okay, answer is false. Or should I just put a little asterisk there? Pain doesn't always equal damage. From a very, very young age, from the get-go, um, we've fallen over as little kids and we've scraped our knee and it has been very painful and we can see blood and we start to join the dots there and there's a strong strong correlation and causation in that when we damage or when we feel pain we have damaged 
our cells, our tissue, we can see it. But that's not always the case, particularly as we get older. And for those people with arthritis and it's chronic and we're dealing with chronic pain lasting longer than three months, pain doesn't always equal damage. And again, I bring it up just to take away some of that fear and fear avoidance of exercise away from, from exercise, okay? Because sometimes pain can come up when we're exercising and it may not necessarily equal damage so hurt does not always equal harm pain when we exercise doesn't always mean we've injured ourselves we may be it just may mean that because of past history because of a past injury um, we may just be a little extra sensitive to certain types of movements um, so for example um, I every now I, I've had a back injury and I had it a, a years ago now and um, it comes up and it comes and it goes and um, in the past I've had doctors look at it and I've had x-rays and all those sorts of things and there's actually it actually looks fine there's some normal degeneration as per my age as I'm aging um, but there's nothing nothing showing there on the images that says there's anything wrong but I still feel pain so an image doesn't always um, explain why you might be feeling pain, but I'll tell you what is very consistent with those flare-ups is times of great stress. So stress can actually cause flare-ups and cause pain and they can be very much interrelated. So it's not just always a physical um, trigger that causes pain. Um, it can also be a psychosocial. So our environment, um, financial stress, social support. What happens if I can't go to work? And how does that make you feel? Think of a, a pianist who cannot use their hands anymore. They start to get arthritis in their hands. That is going to affect that person more than it would somebody else who didn't particularly need their hands or well, doesn't play music, if you will. We all need our hands, but the, the example stands. Um, they may or they will likely feel way more pain than, say, somebody else. So we need to consider that, um, as I guess on the flip side of that, movement, exercise is the forgotten painkiller. So exercise is an actual potent, uh, potent analgesic. So it can actually help reduce pain over time. So keeping those things in mind. Now I'm going to touch on a lot of that pain stuff um, in later um webinars throughout the year that there is one based on pain on pain education and we'll go into that a little bit later so let's move on and wrap the session up um what do you do if you do feel pain though when you're exercising so i guess just just segueing now nicely from what we were just talking about some pain is normal okay um, discomfort is normal. Stiffness is, is normal, particularly after just starting out um, some exercise or even just starting exercise um, if, and if you've been inactive for a long period of time. It can take a good couple of weeks to get used to something, to a new activity, and that's why it's so important to stick to it as you do. So you can feel pain, but like I said, um, hurt doesn't always equal harm. You likely haven't done any tissue damage, um, but don't get me wrong. Of course, you can still injure yourself. Um, and I have some parameters around that that I'm going to talk about after this slide if you do need to seek or when you should seek help um, and advice. But mostly a little bit of pain and discomfort is normal, okay? So when we're exercising, we might be sore, but it's, we're safe. But until the pain improves, the best way to tackle it is to modify your physical activity by by tweaking um, the uh, FIT principle. And that goes something like this. F stands for frequency. So potentially change the days or sessions per week. Arbitrarily, let's just say you haven't done exercise for a very long time and you're like, I'm gonna exercise seven days a week from the get-go. And likely you're gonna run into some problems there. So adjust it, okay, but pull it back. Start with two times per week, that's pretty good. And it's achievable and attainable as well. Intensity, exercise at a pace that suits you. Sometimes we want to keep up with other people, but that may not be the best thing for us. So use that talk test, okay? Time, length or duration um, of the activity that, that you're doing. So how long you're doing it, basically. You're, looking at, you're literally looking at time. So again, I used to work out for an hour and a half. 
um, okay, yeah, you did used to do that, um, but that was 20 years ago. Why don't you try building up to that 20 minutes or 15 minutes, 10 minutes to start with and just slowly build those type. So you might need to swap exercises. So you might be a little fatigued. Perhaps you overdid it, you know, trying to find your Goldilocks zone um, and you're doing some high intensity exercise. Might, you might need to swap it out for some low intensity exercise for the next couple of weeks. Um, you might need to regress different types of exercises, um, reduce the weights, for example. So think about the type of exercise um, and consider that. And of course, for guidance on technique, if you feel uncomfortable, um, obviously looking towards a healthcare professional, EP, physiotherapist, for example. And of course, you can also stop and take a break if necessary. So here's those tips I was talking about. This is when you should see your doctor if you do experience pain. So pain that is really sharp, stabbing and constant. Pain that causes you to limp or change the, your gait, the way that you walk perhaps, and it's persistent. Pain that lasts more than two hours after exercise and or gets worse at night. Pain or swelling that doesn't get better with rest, medication or any other alternative treatment like hot or cold and large increases in swelling in your joints and sorry and all your joints feel hot or they're red okay cardinal signs of inflammation there and if they're sticking around it's probably best just to see your doctor to to make sure everything is okay Ta -da! we finish fantastic we have good another 10 minutes here if we like for any questions so there was a fair bit of information there. The session is recorded, however. Um, so if there's anything that you'd like to ask or clarify, now's the chance. Um, if there's anything you'd like to know more about or you'd like to see um, other topics covered later down the track, now's your, your chance. You can put it in the comment box or save that for the survey later. And because this is about exercise, I always ask, have you seen our Get Moving resources? And Get Moving and Get Moving Plus is a resource made, um, again, for it, it's quite universal. Um, yes, it's within the context of arthritis, but they're basically um, um, PDF sheets of exercises. We've got videos that accompany those. We've got um, safety direction. We've got cues. We've got how many reps and sets you might like to do. And that's all um, available on our website for free. Um, okay, the, the um, floor is um, open to anybody who would like to ask any questions. I can see we've got some fantastic chat going on um, in the chat box. Um, Well, I can see a question here, um, Jenny, if you don't mind me talking, um, 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 saying your question out loud. Um, your question here is, what's the best way to get a diagnosis and then a personal program? So um, the best way to get a diagnosis is to see a, um, a healthcare professional, namely a, a GP or for a diagnosis in allied health, a physiotherapist. But one of those is fine. Um, there are quite set and structured um, sort of uh, protocols or check boxes um, that will tell the healthcare professional um, if it is arthritis or not. You don't necessarily need any imaging unless it is um, and uh, you've got different types of, of symptoms and it's not fitting in line with the, the, the symptoms or the checklist that they have in front of them. And a personalized program, yep. Uh, best to see a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist and they can certainly whip you up a personalized program because they'll take into consideration other comorbidities and they can be a lot more specific for you and your condition they'll still use the same principles and information um, that you've received today but they'll just tweak it for you okay
Um, another good question here is squeezing, and this is from Claire, um, is squeezing a stress ball an okay exercise for my hand with rheumatoid arthritis? Um, so with rheumatoid arthritis, particularly in a flare of, like I mentioned before, that may not be the best case to um, do vigorous and high intensity exercise. And with RA, that's often in the extremities like your hands or your feet. Um, but to maintain strength and to maintain range of motion when you're not in a flare up stage, um, the answer would be yes. And there's lots of other different activities you can do with your hands. Um, if you have a look at our Get Moving Plus webpage, you will find a dedicated um, PDF for hand exercises, which has been endorsed by a senior clinician physiotherapist from Royal North Shore. And she helped us out with looking at different, um, in, you know, which exercises to include for hand arthritis, which is RA, um, includes RA osteoarthritis and any other potential surgeries that may, may have come. So there's lots of different activities that you can do. So all the pictures are there. So I would, I would say go and check that out. Um, strategies to reduce swelling, increase discomfort during a flare up. Um, that's a good question, Roxana. Um, hope I said your name right there. Um, during a flare up again, you need to follow your personal care and pain plan. Um, mm, when we want to reduce swelling, usually elevation above the heart is best. Um, so that could be in your, in your hands. Your, I don't know where your, your, your arthritis is. Um, so if it's in your foot or your ankle, lifting it. So you could be laying down. You could be lifting your foot up. Sitting down like potentially we all are now and then having your leg resting out in front of you is not elevation. It needs to be above your heart. So potentially you lie back and you lift your leg up. Um, some people would say add um, ice. Um, I may not say add ice. Ice is, is better for reducing pain because it has that numbing effect. It may not have, it may not reduce the swelling like we thought it once did. Um, but, but certainly um, icing or using some sort of cool aid may help with reducing potentially, potentially pain. Um, again, it will depend um, if it is, um, what, what, what sorry I just lost my train of thought um it's safe for you there could be some form of um compression bandages or or um or items of clothing as well but again you'll need to discuss that with your healthcare uh professional um there are a few others here and it's 8.25. So is there anybody else who, I, question I may have missed who would like me to, to, to have a look at that or, or answer that one? Um, say it now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> um, Claire, another question from you. Should I stop exercise immediately after feeling the pain? Um, when can I resume the exercise? I potentially may have answered that um, at the back half there. Again, it really depends on the type of pain that you are feeling. If it if it's crippling and it's stopping you, um, if it's really sharp, stabbing, and constant, um, and then then yes, then then potentially you might need to stop and rest and just see how it's going to evolve. Um, but again, a little bit of pain is okay. It's not abnormal. Um, potentially you want to start using, um, however useful you find these is, is that is the pain scale, um, a visual analog scale of, of, you know, one to 10. When you're getting up past eight, nine and 10, if it's pain and it's damaged, that's, yeah, you need to stop. But a little bit of discomfort, like five, sixes, potentially sevens, um, is, is okay. And when can you resume exercise? Well, that's, that's, I don't know, just, it depends. If you haven't damaged tissue, if you don't have any tissue damage, so that, that slide I spoke about with those tips, um, when, when you're ready, when you're ready, you can. But if you have damaged and injured yourself, well, that will, the time to return to exercise will be dependent on the actual injury that has occurred. Um, I have been told to see a rheumatologist. Is that the case? Uh, Jenny says, well, Jenny, I am not too sure on, I guess, um, 
if you'd like to share what you've if you have OA or, or RA or, or something similar a rheumatologist yeah look obviously they're the top of their field they are the specialists when it comes to joint conditions of of, of our musculoskeletal um, uh, systems our joints so if you've got um, osteoarthritis all the way through to any form of um, autoimmune condition regarding the joints a rheumatologist is who you may like to see um, if you're tackling one that's autoimmune based and um, you may need to go on particular medications, um, a rheumatologist is easy to, to sort that out. Someone might have anything or something different to, to add to that or a comment? No. <laughs> Again, uh, last calls. If I haven't answered your question, please, um, please come forth and I will try my best to answer it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for um, coming along tonight. If I could ask one question before you leave, you might like to just put it in the chat box. <laughs> no worries, Roxana. Um, just something that you may have um, learnt or you found interesting or something that you might remember from today's session in the chat box and I'm not saying write an essay I'm just saying it might have been like um, the Goldilocks zone or uh, it could have been motion is lotion or it could have been something like that the fit principle um, what's something that you you didn't hear before but you've heard now something that you liked if you'd like to share it in the chat box you can if not, that about wraps wraps it up. And um, please see our website and check out our e-news for any upcoming, upcoming webinars and topics. And we also have a, a new partnership with BJC who also offer webinars and they're a little bit more specific to, um, Again, um, arthritis conditions, but other musculoskeletal conditions as well. So we can get some really great coverage and variety of um, webinars and information out to you guys. So look out for that information on the website and our newsletters as well. Smart Tips was good. Great. Goldilocks Zone. <laughs> awesome. Hand exercise, yes. If anybody would, I don't mind staying on for another couple of minutes if you want me to show you where Get Moving and Get Moving Plus is. I can do that for you now. Um, but I'll let those people go who you want to go and those who stay on, I'll show, I'll show you those resources. If not, and you want to go, please go. I hope you enjoy this evening and you learned something. And I'll catch you all next time. Oh, and um, if you have time, please uh, fill out the survey. That would be really great. You'll see that coming in an email um, in the next couple of hours or, or tomorrow morning, I think. And filling out that is really helpful for us. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Sarah. I saw you there. Lovely to see you. Um, okay, great, Lynn. She's going to wait. Okay, look, if you're hanging around, um, uh, do so. I'm going to show you. I'm going to share my screen and show you now, but you're welcome just to, to go to go when you're ready. So I'll share my screen again. Great, thank you. Okay, I need to go to... Thank you. See you later. All right, I'm just sharing this with you now. I don't want to go there. I want to go to arthritis NSW. Okay, there we are. Okay. So this is our home page here. Okay, so um, there's a couple of different ways to get there. There's obviously the tab for webinar series 2022. So go ahead and check out what's coming up next, uh, next month. Um, where you'd like to go would be finding a service. 
and you'll get this sidebar here, okay? And if I scroll down, I can see the tab where it says Get Moving Series. Okay, that's what I'm talking about when I was saying um, Get Moving. But I'll just direct you to the side here. We have Get Moving Plus as well. Um, and that's a little bit more dedicated to exercise specific um, to the joint, okay, for any time of arth arthritis um, or other musculoskeletal um, condition of, of that joint. Um, but I'll just quickly show you the Get Moving first and then I'll, then I'll show you that one. So... Let's go here. So this is what will, will come up. And please have a read of that. And if you just love my face and love my voice, you can hear me again. I'm right there. And that's just me explaining it. Um, one thing I'd like to point out here, I, there are age parameters for each beginner, intermediate, advanced. They probably need to be um, deleted because really, um, age is just a number and you could be in your 80s doing you know a hundred kilo deadlift and uh, you would be an advanced <laughs> um, gym goer so they really don't uh, dictate your level as to your age but for some people it helps um, so please ignore that um, but depending on where you're starting out and your fitness level um, and your conditions, you might like to look at the basic exercises and you can work your way through to advance. I'll have a look at the beginner. So you click on the beginner and this is all the information, okay, about or for the, for the exercises. Um, so what it does, it talks to you about what reps and sets and tempos a number of exercises per circuit that you might like to do and how many times um, or days per week you might like to do it, okay? And then all you need to do within those parameters is slot in what exercises suit you best. And if you've got some exercise equipment at home, uh, some of these don't have exercise equipment. Some videos can even show you what you can use around the house. Um, and um, yeah, and away you go, maybe put on some music. So. If you scroll further down, if you select these, that will take you to a YouTube clip of, uh, of, of me <laughs> demonstrating the exercise with the cues coming in. Okay, so you can actually see that. Um, but for the PDF, you select a little booklet and you've got the booklet here. Okay, so you can scroll through that, have a read. Um, exercise options how to structure your workout. We've got essential tips. We've got tips on safety. And then we have exercises. So again, this is really basic. This is just a sit to stand. This is a regressed version of a squat. So this might be something for you. Muscles that you're working on here, some safety tips. We've got a wall push up, a really regressed version of, of, of a push up on your toes, which is in the um, advanced. Okay. So so on and and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way back and I'm going to look at the Get Moving Plus. Okay, there's me again, if you haven't got enough of me already. Um, here we have our industry endorsements. We have Andrew Wood from Canterbury Hospital, who is the Osteoarthritis Chronic Care Program coordinator there. He endorsed sort of the lower half body um, exercise, joint exercise uh, specific movements. And then we have Stacey, who is a hand physiotherapist and senior clinician at Royal North Shore, helping um, collate and endorse again um, the hand exercises. So just to show you, um, let's go to hand, click on the, the booklet. For the hand, there isn't any videos um, just yet. For the other ones, there is. But really for the hand, it's fairly straightforward and I don't really think people need it. Again, all the preamble, important, please read through. 
and I'm still scrolling. And there I am again, like you haven't had enough of me. We've got some tendon slides using um, um, a hook and a fist, a tabletop. So they're really, really important um, for hands, tendons of the hands. Sometimes they get affected um, for different types of conditions. But if you need to maintain that movement, this is a really great exercise to maintain range of motion of those tendons sliding through the sheaths. And we've got, what else did we have? We've got finger, we've got finger spreading. <clears throat> Here we've got some passive finger range of motion where it can guide you through doing some gentle oscillations into a particular range of a joint of your finger. Now I'd say be doing this when you're not in a flare up stage. And again, you might find it a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit of pain, but you're not damaging, okay? Um, so there's some finger range of motion that's passive. So your hand, your other hand is moving this hand. Okay. Here we have some putty and some exercise, some stress balls. So squeezing those really great for grip strength and look, it goes on and on. So we've got finger spread with, with putty with, so there's some resistance. We've got some thumb movements. If you've got issues with, with your, um, with your thumb joints and it goes on. Okay. So I will, I will leave it there. I hope that's helpful. Um, and if you can't find it, there's always a little search bar up the top and you can just put get moving plus or get moving in there and everything will pop up. Oh, Roxana, wow, that's awesome. Um, capital, all capital Sarah is a good hand program free on YouTube from the UK. That is awesome. I didn't know about that. That's great. That's something that we could I'll have a look at and potentially potentially use. That's great. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, that about does it for the night. I'm just going to write that one down. Um, and program from the UK. Great. I think we'll leave it there guys so thank you all for staying on thank you for exploring with me thank you for um, listening and thank you so much for your questions that you have provided throughout um, please fill out the survey when it comes round or we really appreciate it we'd love you to and we might see you in the future so have a good thank evening you. everybody thank you thanks Pauline very, very good helpful great by Paula, by Roxanne, by... Oh, they're all leaving. I can't do it. It's too fast. Okay. Catch you later.